Hello everyone. Uh, this seems to be quite a day for me. Um, someone, one of our subscribers, and I, and I apologize for the person who posted. I, I can't find your email. Asked me if I could please define the death birth model. I think I had done this about a year or so ago, but I couldn't find it. And then when I went on the website to check to explain what a death birth model was, I didn't like their explanations. It was too convoluted. And so here's my attempt. The, bet, the death birth model works like this. Originally, in 1952, uh, when Eisenhower was president, and like I said before, it doesn't make a difference um, who the president is. They've always manipulated the numbers uh, for the benefit of whoever was in power. Anyway, before 1952, uh, as I said in the, in the unemployment metric, uh, they sent out social workers, and, the, and, and part of the reason why, I, why uh, FDR did this was twofold. For the same reason during the WPA, which was the, uh, and the NRA, not to be confused with the gun lobby, but it was called the National Recovery Administration. It's all part of the New Deal. One of the things that they did, or one of the things FDR had thought about with his group, was the fact that most uh, Soviet-style revolutions occurred amongst artists and intellectuals and social workers seem to fall into that general cusp. So what FDR initially did was send out all these social workers to count people, to keep them busy, to keep them from starting a communist revolution. This is the reason why it was set up originally. So anyway, getting back to, F, uh, to Eisenhower. 1952, um, Eisenhower in established with the Bureau of Labor Statistics um, an allowment, instead of sending out all these um, social workers, uh, he still sent out some social workers into the fields in the large cities, New York, Chicago, and so on. Uh, but, in, but, but he allowed the BLS, um, the Bureau of Labor Statistics, I want to call it BLS from this point forward, allowed the BLS to guesstimate based on previous data ranging from 1937 to 1947 how many people's, uh, how, how many jobs were created and how many jobs were lost. They changed the definition between people who were becoming uh, 18 and those people who were becoming 60 or 62 and a half or whatever it was at the time, um, instead of physically counting that death birth model, they changed the definition to how many jobs in the past around that same day or month or season were created and, and lost based on 10 years of data from 1937 to 1947. So that seemed like a reasonable uh, factor, but the problem was that they continued to use the birth-death model with the old data from the, t you know, the 10-year-old data, whatever. So then by the time um, uh, Reagan, who made the next big move, uh, changed the BLS's birth-death model um, to, to just guesstimating, he basically wrote an executive order that said, you know, you can guesstimate within reason, blah, 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 blah which that latitude or the latitude of how many they guess became, uh, you know, to almost a level of abuse to where the death birth model during the Reagan, during the second Bush administration, especially between 2007 and 2008, they were adjusting it back and forth, um, almost like a plunge protection team, trying to control the amount of real losses to basically, um, to prevent people from seeing that there's a big tumble. Now, one other thing I wanted to point out, both Reagan and Eisenhower did this death birth model to encourage you know, people who were basing their hiring standards on how many jobs were, were lost or gained um, because that's how they adjusted salaries. If there were fewer people able to do the job, the price went up, the more people were available, the employer would employ at a lower rate of pay. And this was normal. And this was, you know, pretty much the standard operating procedure up until probably around the Reagan period. Now that stopped being the rationale to prevent worker, prevent employers from hiring or not hiring because it really was a non-starter when people needed people and they were getting financing. They were hiring people regardless in the 80s and the 90s. 
So now that metric, and we were talking about metrics last time, yesterday, that metric changed. So now they were using it for political gain, I mean, like everything. And so, so they can choose 100% based on the death birth model. They can close their eyes and say, um, yeah, the numbers look like crap, so I'm going to imagine, and click my heels three times, and imagine 75,000 more jobs. Voila. And that's really what's happening. And that's the reason why a lot of people, raise, even the most, you know, Kool-Aid drinking, you know, MSNBC, whatever, uh, even Tom Hartman, which I was very surprised at, uh, was... Who who t who said that the numbers were more like fifteen percent when 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 uh, I shouldn't be surprised when Bush was in in presidency uh, is now touting it for Obama which is just that's a sh sad, that's a damn, damn shame but I shouldn't be so surprised but anyway I digress so the death birth model basically started out being an adjustment to encourage worker encourage employers to raise wages or lower wages and then it became a political junket. To, uh, of sorts, to control the public media for everyone. You know, the, the, the numbers are not as bad, the numbers are much worse, depending on how they wanted or what they wanted to change. So now these numbers mean nothing. Someone also just uh, messaged me, um, and I apologize, I'm going to try to see if I can see who this person was, and I apologize again. Oh, uh... Sharon Family Connect, um, you asked a question as to what, based on Shadow Stats numbers, what's the real inflation rate? The real inflation rate is, I think, I think they said, it, I think the official, the government official one is somewhere around one or two percent. I I checked it yesterday. I believe, and I apologize, somewhere close to eight percent inflation, which is very high for a. 26% unemployment rate. Um, and even those numbers, the reason why they seem to be single digit is for no other reason that we subsidize corn and we subsidize beef and we subsidize dairy. If we didn't subsidize those prices, the true inflation rate would be probably around 12 to 14% per annum. And that that is manipulated by the government, but it's openly man manipulated by the government, and you can factor it in. Uh, reality is a gallon of milk is a gallon of milk, and a you know uh, a bushel of corn is a bushel of corn, but if you subsidize it in country, it's going to lower the inflation rate because you're subsidizing it. And because we had such a shortage uh, because of the droughts and everything, um, it, if, if it was left untouched by the subsidization, um, we would be probably looking at closer to 15% inflation. And that may work in into a real number, watching shadow stats in the next year. Um, once those food shortages become real now in real time, we won't see what has happened in the summer of 2012, probably until the spring into early summer, early spring to mid-spring of 2013. Um, because whatever we grew for 2011 will run out around that time. Uh, even though we have a zero storage capacity at this point, um, that the the food that's in the um, in the pipeline, to use a, a jargon, um, is is still in the pipeline, and it will be flushed out around mid spring. So you're we're already seeing uh, food prices rise uh, already. Um, pardon me while I move this around, uh, but. Um, but we have seen nothing yet. Nothing. So, till next time, that's the death birth model and uh, whatever ancillary stuff. Thank you for your questions. I will try to respond to them as I get them. And if I can't respond to you right away, please be patient. Uh, I will get to you. Peace.